Hello everyone, this is Natalie Rodriguez and today I will be sharing my key takeaways from HE 547, Effective Online Instruction. So let's move on to the show. It's important to note Ruth Calvin Clark and Richard Mayer because of their well put together text which discusses and defines e-learning by the relationship of cognitive learning and how we as instructors and instructional designers make decisions on curriculum. There are five most commonly used content types in e-learning, which are used to teach specific learning content to the use of graphics. The first one is facts, the unique and isolated information. Examples of this is specific application screens, product data, or forms. The second is concepts, it's categories of objects, events, or symbols designated by a single name. The third is process a description of how something works. The fourth is procedure, a series of steps resulting in a completion of a task. The fifth is principle, guidelines that result in completion of a task. Examples of this are cause and effect relationships. So what is learning? We can say it's when we acquire knowledge. But a deeper understanding, backed by scientists, is that learning involves change. And the change is what the learner knows. Change is caused by the learner's experience. Learning involves strengthening correct responses and weakening incorrect responses. Learning is Making sense of presented material by attending to relevant information, mentally organizing it, and connecting it with prior knowledge. Learning is adding new information to your memory. Cognitive processing. This is where we get into capacity for learning. Extraneous processing. That does not support instructional objectives and is created by poor instructional layout. This is caused by too much extraneous text and pictures. Essential processing. This is aimed at mentally representing core material and it is created by the complexity. It's mainly relevant material. Now generative processing. This is aimed at deeper understanding and is created by motivating the learner to make sense of the material. This is done by organizing and integrating. This is where we want to head to. Now what is instruction? So this is where all those cognitive processes must be manipulated in a way that fosters learning. Another key takeaway is instructor presence. Now this is a biggie. Research has shown how being active in the course has a significant effect on student learning. The universal design principle. The definition of this principle is providing content in multiple ways which is engaging and motivates all learners. The personalization principle. And this is a really important concept for online. There are psychological advantages. And you should provide a friendly atmosphere for students. You can use avatars, just as this one is, and social cues. Whenever you can, try to use you, your, we, or I when speaking with students. Conversational tone. This is another biggie for online students. You want to provide a friendly human voice and apply pedagogical agents. Just like this little instructor that I inserted here. And he's saying, check it out. Just by adding these little tidbits in your instruction allows the human side to come out. And that way, you close the gap between the distance of online learning. Cognitive psychology. Humans process through two channels, the auditory, which is phonetic, and your visual channels. 
So here we can see a nice representation of how we process multimedia presentations through spoken words or pictures, we either use our ears or our eyes, and we either process it through phonetic or visual processing into our working memory. Working memory. This is a student's ability to retain information while performing concurrent processing. This is critical to the acquisition of increasingly more complex knowledge and skills. Results. This is what I've gained from this course. I have learned that online learners need motivation. A positive atmosphere and a good role model. I have learned that planning is essential for leveraging technology and that it is essential that content is relevant. I have learned that backwards design closes the loop. I have learned that experts are always willing to share. So take advantage and be the best instructor, designer, course developer I can be. I have blossomed with a wealth of opportunities. I hope you have too in this course. Thank you for watching.